Hello, Bonham. Ravindra. Hello, Bonham. Sir. Yes. So, Saad sir is there, okay. So, Saad sir, our uh, head and EC department already in this meeting, meeting uh, Dr. Uma uh, Habiba. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Hi. Welcome to uh, Bharat University online workshop, sir. Uh, we are very happy to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, what time we are starting in seven minutes? Yes, sir. We start uh, we can... in seven minutes, right? Yes, sir. Six o'clock. We can start. Okay. Six minutes, sir. Five, six minutes, sir. Seven minutes, huh? Uh, six minutes, six minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Sir, for all that, time I had.
Sir? Sir, sir. Can you see everyone's screen? Woman, can you start? Sir, two minutes, sir. Two minutes. Mom, can you start? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uchita, please start. Yes, sir. You can start. Yes. Uh, 113, uh, 114, uh, new to the in, in, in life. Okay. Okay. You can start. Start. I welcome, uh, welcome you all to the second day of the night from the show. Uh, today, the first session. It's uh, presented by Professor Dr. Sarah Nakhli. He is a charge engineer and a fellow of the Institute of Engineering and Technology and a senior member of the Institute of Electrical and Economics Engineers. He is an associate editor of various top journals such as IEEE Transactions on Power Electronics and Journal of Power Electronics. He is a distinguished professor at the School of Science, Computing and Engineering Technologies, Swinburne University of Technology, Australia. And he is an honorary professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering, University of Malaya. He authored and co authored more than 400 publications in academic journals and proceedings, and five books with more than 29,000 citations. He is frequently invited as honorary keynote lectures at the international conference, meetings, and symposium. Professor Meklev has been listed by Thomson Reuters as one of the highly cited engineering researchers in the world 
during 2018, 2019, and 2020. He's actively involved in industrial consultancy for major corporations in power electronics and renewable energy projects. His research interests include power conversion techniques, control of power converters, maximum power point tracking, renewable energy, and energy efficiency. I'm happy to invite you for this session, sir. And uh, we are all waiting to, for your lecture. Could you, thank you very much for the introduction. Could you please give me the permission to share the screen? Can you please activate my uh, screen sharing? Yeah, thank you. Can you see my slide? Yes, sir. Uh, full screen mode should go to full screen mode. Sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, thank you very much for the invitation and also thank you very much for the introduction. Just want to check uh, how much time I have. Sir, 40, 45 minutes. After that, we'll okay. take Okay, thank you. Okay, so what, uh, what I'm going to share with you this, uh, this afternoon or this evening is uh, an overview on citation. <laughs> this is a very uh, uh, interesting and also a hot topic uh, on the citations. So it is, uh, it's, I, I know most of you maybe know what does mean citations. Citations means uh, how many people refers back to your work? How many people cite your work? And uh, this is also another uh, one of the way how to measure the quality of the research outputs that a researcher do. Because when we do research, we produce publications or we produce patents. When we produce publication, the only way how to measure the quality of the papers that we produce is by how many people refer to these papers and use them as a reference for their future work. So this is the, the way how we measure the, the quality. Means quality research outputs will be uh, referred more frequently compared to papers which does not receive any citation. So this is one. If we, we produce a patent from the research output, this patent have to be commercialized. Means there will be a product that will be sell in the market. So these are the way uh, how we measure the output of our research, either through papers, uh, the, out, uh, the, out, the output of the research is papers, research papers in conferences and journals, or uh, patents. Patents, which goes to the commercializations. Commercialization, very simple. Patent, then you have to license this patent, and then you will get the, uh, this commercialized. So this is easy for you, for you to measure. The same thing goes for, this, for the papers. When we produce a paper, then we want to see how this paper been used as a reference by other researchers. So this is what I'm going to share with you uh, today. And uh, before uh, uh, what you call uh, talking about the citations, I, I would like to share with you also the very important uh, what you call steps. Because to reach to the level when you want to cite your work, you have to form an effective group. You must have a research group. That's very, very important. And this research group consists of postgraduate students, lecturers, professors, technicians, international experts. So this is very, very important because you cannot work alone. 
as a researcher, you cannot work in as a person, one person, even you and your students. It's impossible. As a researchers, we usually work with other people. We have to collaborate. We have to work with other researchers around the globe because that will give us uh, a better, uh, we call uh, uh, steps or better uh, environment and also give us a better, uh, good opportunity to access to different, uh, what we call tools and uh, what we call ideas from other researchers. And then when we, co when we collaborate together, we can produce a better output. And also, very important, you must uh, have some good models that you have to follow in your in your uh, uh, writing, for example, because uh, no one will no one will cite or no one will read uh, papers which are not properly uh, written or not good uh, or well written and well presented. So you must have some uh, role models and these role models that exists actually in all all uh, all fields and in all aspects of life so you always have someone that you think that you can be like him or like her you know which do write well speaks well present well uh, teach well and so on and so forth so these are the people that you should try to always follow and try to improve and when you read these papers, when you read their papers, you can get them, right? you can get inspired and you can get some ideas on what will be the, the best way on how you can follow them. And also very, very important things, which uh, all we know, research is a very challenging work, very challenging, because uh, we always deal with uh, uh, very, complicated and uh, uh, things. So research is not something straightforward. Things that is straightforward is not a research. Things research is very complicated and very complex and requires uh, teamwork, okay? You cannot do research alone, okay? It's a required teamwork and also require collaborations. So this is very important. Okay, means in order for us to produce a good quality research, because I'm talking here about producing high quality and good quality research. In order for us to produce these types of research, you need to collaborate and you must have a team to work with that. You cannot produce, uh, you cannot work alone, one percent uh, or two people, you cannot work alone. You must work as a team because the relationship between citations and uh, outputs or the number of publications, it's always, uh, you know, it has a relationship. The more you you produce more papers, the more probability and the more possible citations that you have, okay? So once you have a teamwork and you have collaborators, things which are difficult for you as a person or as a small team, it can be possible when you are working with uh, with other researchers and other collaborators around. So this is the strength and this is the the, the way forward. Means if you are a researcher, you, you must think of how to form your team and also how you want to form your international collaborators around the world. Okay. Okay, and then very, very important when we when we uh, when we do research, uh, we we always Either we are going to help other people, maybe it can be your students, can be other your colleagues, or can be another collaborators. You you help you help them, or you try, when you see help them means not not give them uh, free publications or free papers or whatever, but help them in terms of working together. Sometimes you may do more. For example, you may do eighty percent, the other person do twenty percent, and that is collaborations. But and maybe some some later times he will do eighty percent, you do twenty percent, because in the collaborations you have to learn how to give and take, and you cannot. Uh, the collaboration is always built on trust, and you cannot, how uh, you call, uh, uh, be very calculative in doing the collaborations, especially at the beginning.
because it's impossible to have a 50 50 percent for example if you are four authors in the paper it's impossible to have each person contribute 25 percent it's never happened it's never happened even in ideal uh, research labs or in ideal uh, the best institution like mit or harvard or any other universities it's impossible to contribute equally in each publications it's always there must be someone contributing some more another person contributing less another time it will be the opposite and that's how the people and then how these people can uh, progress and move forward okay and this is just the, my sketch, actually, I just sketch it just now, which is how to form your team uh, or a model of the team. So most of these teams should have uh, what you call uh, students. Okay, very important. The important one, students. When I mean here, students means I'm talking about the postgraduate student, means it is a research PhD students and master students. That's, the, that's a very important component in a research team. You must have uh, a possible postdoctoral fellow because that's actually will help you to supervise and uh, uh, help the postgraduate student because this one will work closely with with these students. Very very important. And uh, local team, local team means your colleagues. At, uh, if you are a professor or lecturer at the university, it means your local team, means local university all in within the same country for example if we are in india with different institutions around and also international collaborators okay so most of the time you will always working with this team together okay but this international collaborations and the local collaborators also will have a very important role and just to let you know for papers for example for citations usually a paper with uh, Multi affiliations. What I mean, multi affiliations means uh, more than one country in the affiliations. It will at, it attracts more citations compared to a single uh, country affiliation. For example, if you have a paper which published, for example, between uh, India, US, Australia, and the UK, this paper will has a high probability and high uh, potential to be high to be cited. Okay, so that's the the way. That's why we tend to work and collaborate with many other uh, international collaborators. Okay, when we when we uh, uh, call, want to publish a paper, okay, in any journals, we always look into where to submit these papers. Okay. There are thousands, tens of thousands of journal papers on conferences. Okay. Okay, that's very, very important steps before, because the citations actually starts when you start writing your paper, not after you, you, write, you publish your paper. Once you publish your paper, it's done, it's finished already. You have no, no say, because the citation depends on other people to cite. But in order for you to get a paper, which is highly cited paper, or to get more citations to your papers, you have to plan from the writing stage. Okay. And that's actually uh, after writing and doing a good research and good results presented in the paper. And also where you publish the paper. Very, very important. There are many, as I said now, there are thousands and tens of thousands of journal papers. Where actually to see like the, the, the paper? One of the ways and the most important way is to select the journals based on their impact factor. Okay, and the impact factor we have two. Either you select the impact factor based on the Web of Science, which is the most prominent and the best reference Web of Science, or Scopus. Okay, from ninety percent of the papers in Web of Science are also in Scopus. So there is a big overlap between the two databases. But I always prefer to, to refer to the Web of Science. And you always try to, to download and refer to the journal citation reports. This journal citation reports gives you the, the latest, excuse me, the latest 
update on the impact factor of the journal. And the impact factor of the journal is a very easy equation. If, you, if I can write here, the impact factor of the journal is IF, F. Uh, you can get it from everywhere, equal to the citations over the number of papers published. So if if you if the formula is very important, for example, you publish, uh, uh, for example, as a journal, you publish a certain number of papers per. Uh, they, they do it two years, over two years for the work of science. Two years for two years. What is the number of papers you published within that two years, and how many paper, how many citations be received within that two years? And that's the formula. Very simple formula. So what does it mean? It means as the, the, the formula here, there are the editors who always try to, to, they cannot control the citations. They can control this. So the only way is to reduce this one, to increase the impact factor. But if you reduce this one here too much, then you may miss some good papers. So that, that's why the editor is looking for good, high quality papers, okay, which improve the C, the citation. So the more citations, the better, the higher impact factor. So the formula is very simple. We will talk later on about the, the self citations and so on and so forth. So that's a very, very important issue also. So that's how uh, we call uh, the, the first, uh, uh, sorry, the second step of selecting the right journal for your paper. Because there are so many journals you publish, then no one will look at, no one will cite, no one will refer to. So actually you have wasted a lot of, of your efforts and your time and your money just publishing something which has no, no use. If you imagine you do a research for three, four years and then you publish a paper and no one refer to it, no one read it. Okay, that's the same like you are producing a book and then no one buy your book. So that's actually the, the, the way how to measure the impact of your effort. Okay, and in the publications, there are many types of publications or many forms of publications. There is, for example, review papers, there is original articles, conference papers, uh, notes. Uh, there are many, many forms actually, but the most common one is the history, which is the review papers, uh, original articles, and conference papers. So this is a study done by Scopus okay, on the citations. What is the average citations per paper comparing these three, the most 99% of the papers are in either a review articles or conference papers. So what they found actually, the highest number of citations usually it's for review papers. Usually review papers tend to attract more citations compared to uh, uh, original articles and conference papers. Conference papers is the lowest, and then followed by original articles and the highest. So you can see uh, the, the average citations per paper is around four, which is very high compared to one or 1.5. For original articles, then compared by almost less than 0 0.5 for conference papers. And you can see the trend as the paper gets older, okay, the paper gets older, the citations will drop automatically because people will look for new, uh, new papers. Okay, so what does this mean? It means if you want to have higher citations, better citations, you have to publish some review papers. You cannot publish only review papers because you, you you are not going to just uh, write the review papers because the review papers is written by experts in the area, which have, have they have done a lot of research and then in the end they will write a review on what they have read and then what other researchers have done. So this is that's a review. Review papers usually attract a lot of citations. That's why. If you look into, for example, I give, can give you an example of one of the journals, 
which is um, uh, in my area, which is renewable and sustainable energy reviews, the, the impact factor is almost 15 now. It, two years, three years back, it was only six or seven. Then suddenly jumped to 15. So this is why the, the review papers are attracting a lot of citation. And it makes sense because, for example, for early career researchers or the, the PhD students, Usually they they prefer to read the review papers first. Why? Because the review paper summarizes all what has been reported in the literature. Instead of reading hundred papers, you can read one review paper, and that review paper gives you the summary of all what have been reported. Okay. So that's why uh, it's very uh, it the tendency or the probability of this paper to be cited is very very high. Okay, so writing a review papers, it's a good idea, and especially for uh, PhD students who just started. Uh, after they do one year, two years, maybe uh, together, and then you can write a review paper. So that's that's very very important. Okay, so this is a very important chart, and this is the same actually. Even you extend it to 2022, is the same things. The trend is the same. Okay, some strategies how to increase the citations okay i'm here i'm taking here to increase the citations means not to manipulate or fabricate or falsify or do unethical things to increase your citations no i'm talking about the, the legitimate way or the, the right way okay one as i said just now the very important one which you select a journal with a high impact factor why why high impact factor? High impact factor means quality. When you see quality, means people always refer to a better papers. So when you re people refer to it, it, means they will tend to cite it. That's very, very important. Okay? So high impact factors, journals usually will have higher citations, papers, okay? Number two, a rapidly growing field of research. Oh, this is very, very important. Okay, some of the fields which very difficult to attract the citations. I'll give you an example, mathematics. Okay, very difficult. For example, you're working on a control theory. Very hard to, to, to get citations. For example, working on robotics. Robotics, the industry is, is ahead of academia. So who is going to cite your papers? So there are some areas which are very, uh, very difficult. Like I give you an example. Many researchers, you know, uh, use the COVID as, um, as a, you know, as a case. You know, for example, the impact of renewable energy and on, and COVID, uh, electricity consumption and COVID. Uh, uh, many, many. They just add the COVID in the title of the paper and uh, try to link the 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 research to the COVID and then how the COVID impacted the research and that this paper attracts many sites because when you do search search COVID that paper will appear. Okay, so this is very very important. So the topic, the hot topics, okay, which are very very important, and the people looking for solution to these problems, then they will uh, attract. And this is called what they call hot topics. Okay. Hot topics usually attract good uh, citations, but very, very important. You have to select the right journals, the target journals, which is uh, do a rapid uh, publication because sometimes you might do some good research, but the journal takes one, two years to publish. So your idea or your topics is already get obsolete. Okay, no one will refer to it because you select the wrong place because some journals they take long very long time to process the papers maybe sometimes one year two years so that's too long and that's not good for the citations because the moment uh, you publish they, they publish your article your data or your what you have presented is already two years maybe you have done it two years back and then the two years the text publication becomes four years so it's become absolutely so it's not, so you have to select the rapid journals. And then 
you, you, if you, I made the question, maybe how you know these journals is rapidly publishing. No, you have to look into the history of the journals. For example, when uh, when you publish, they will put the date of the submission, the date of acceptance, and the date of publication. So this is very very important. Okay. Yeah, uh, the thought, I, I already mentioned this. I write the review papers. Okay, they are more likely to be cited. Okay. Okay, and then also uh, write length, uh, long article. Means, what, what does it mean? It means is you write a good piece of work. It means it's a complete piece of work. It means it consists or it contains all what the researcher needs. So that's people will refer to it. it means they find it very useful. It means they can refer to it as a main reference. Because people will always cite the main references, not all the papers they download and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the impact factor I already mentioned. It ranges between from 0 0.0002 up to, for example, uh, uh, the Cancer Journal uh, 69 or, or Nature 32 and so on. So this is the range. It's from 0 0.00 up to 100 and so on. So you need to to, to select the right target of journals. And these journals, usually the high impact factor, the citations will be, and the very important uh, self citations. This is a very hot topics also among all the researchers because uh, self citations, it's a, uh, it's a, if it's not controlled or if it's not monitored, okay, uh, it can be, self fired you know so for so example you have your papers you publish papers and you always cite your own papers this is what called sub citations and this is sub citations not only uh, applies to uh, individual researchers for example if i publish papers and then uh, every paper i publish i cite my own papers this is called author self citation and usually the threshold which is the red line which is around 20% Means if you have 1,000 citation, you should not have more than 200 self citation. But for me, even that one is too too much. You should always try to keep it below 10%. When I see 20%, 20% means it will trigger the the red flag. The red flag means all the databases okay they will highlight this author is having self citation. So, but as I say, my advice is to always keep it below 10%. Try not to over self cite yourself. Okay, this is for author. Also, there is self citation for journal. And this is not for you, maybe, but for the editors. Editors also doesn't like people to self to cite their own journal always. For example, I publish a paper in the journal and I, I put, I have uh, 20 references, I put 10, 20, 15 references from the same journal. This is called self citation for the journal. And also, there is self citation for the university. Means if this, that university people in the, that university is citing each other to increase the citation, so this is called the university self citation. And there is a country level also. So, this is a bigger, uh, what you call, uh, they, they, they have measures of this. Especially the web of science, because they, they have some this, they monitor this kind of citation. So, this is very, very important. And especially for authors, uh, I advise you have to be very careful on these self citations. And even, even you ask another person to self cite you and you cite him, and there is a software actually they can track from where the citation comes. Who are these authors? Who are these universities? Who are these journals? Who are these? And they can give you an example of one journal, which I know very well. This journal, uh, this editor actually, what he did, he created two journals. Okay, he created two journals and uh, he published papers and then this journal become an ISI, journals, two journals. Let's see, this is a journal A and this is journal B. Okay, I, I, I don't want to give the names. But uh, journal E and journal B. Then what he did, whenever he have a papers in this journal A, he will cite the papers in journal B. 
when he is a papers in B, he cited journal C. Then suddenly the impact factor jumped from one up to 30. You know, big jump. You know, oh, everyone started asking questions. How come this journal, you know, the impact factor suddenly jumped? Then they start analyzing. Then they found this manipulation. And what happened is both journals have dropped from a work of science and been blacklisted. And this editor also blacklisted. That's why always you have to think of long term. You have to think of always doing something which is uh, ethical and which is uh, very uh, useful, you know, because sometimes we tend to do things which later on impossible for us to, to cite or to, to change. Okay. And I think you know the, the citation, the H index, the H index citation, uh, citation are linked to each other. So if you have uh, 10 papers, you publish 10 papers, and each paper receives one citation, so your H index is one. If you have 10 papers, each, all of them receive 10, 10, 10, 10 citations, your H index is 10. If you have 10 papers and uh, each paper receives five citations, your H index is five. So the H index is measuring the number of citations uh, per paper. Okay. And this is, you can get it tightly. It's very, very, very simple. Okay. Uh, okay. I think this is uh, maybe, yeah, how to increase the citation. So I, I just give you some examples here, some hot topics. Okay. I just explain. For example, this nanofluid, biofuel, X. Exergy, you know, so these are some hot topics, you know, every within uh, one year uh, receives almost 600 citations, 300, 125 citations. And also sometimes the, the authors, okay, the authors are also the well-known authors, uh, also tend to uh, attract citations. Yeah, I know maybe this is not fair and it's not, uh, uh, it's not right. But uh, people always tend to refer to people who are well established because they they say that uh, what you call uh, these are people uh, really uh, they, what they have produced and what they write is can be trusted and it's something genuine. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I have uh, mentioned just now, which, which is target the journal that is rapidly growing fast. Uh, hot topics. Okay, yeah, and, and make good friends, very important, and collaborators. You may ask how these collaborators can help. Maybe, yes, I know most of people think collaborators only just to, to write paper together. No, sometimes, yeah, they know your, your papers well, and they can, uh, we call, uh, cite your papers. Because, for example, I know a colleague which is working in the same area, so when I uh, write my papers, I will automatically cite his papers. Yeah, because but they are must be relevant to the topic, right? It's not something outside, but it's they are relevant to topics. You cannot just simply cite. We have to cite the papers which are relevant to the topics. Okay, and uh, and uh, and uh, sometimes you know, uh, sometimes you may uh, 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 okay. This is a, a very important uh, and uh, very complex actually. Uh, the last one. If you are invited as a reviewer, suggest your colleagues relevant papers if missing, not cited. Okay, here is you have to be very careful of this, you know, because you may suggest, but not only your own papers to the authors, but the papers have to be relevant. Okay, have to be also you can you have to put the complete citation means the author's name, the title, the publication, and then also you have to put a note to the editor that actually you are suggesting your own papers. So the editor knows, everyone knows that you are suggesting these papers. So you, if they are related to the topics, I, I personally see no problems, but you have to be doing it transparently. But if possible, if you, you don't do it, better not. But it's possible sometimes you do uh, what you call suggest for other people. And sometimes also it's good to share 
your publications with other people. So, for example, you have published, you can download the PDF and you share with other people, with authors. You cannot put it in the social media because that's infringing the copyright, but you can share with other colleagues the personal contact through emails. So that's not a problem because that actually creates what you call enhanced visibility of your of your work because this is very very important. Uh, people will, will, will cite your papers if the papers are visible. And this visibility comes when people know. Because if you, if you write a paper and no one knows it, no one sees it, how are they going to cite it? So uh, visibility, sharing the papers with others actually improves the, the citations. And you can use all the available social media, but as I see, you have to be careful on the copyright, okay? Because many, uh, all when we submit the journal papers, when we sign it, uh, becoming uh, uh, what you call, uh, we sign a copyright, unless it is an open access. If it is an open access, I think you have no problems. You can just put the link and everyone can download it because now the trend is moving to open access. Open access tend to, have a higher citations compared to subscription subscription journals but the problem with the open access is the higher fee okay so higher fee usually uh, uh, usually uh, doesn't what I call uh, encourage people to publish especially from uh, uh, developing countries and poor countries these are some tips on citations choose an effective title because that's the first thing that people look at when people do the search, they write search. So you have to select the right keywords. The first thing is a title. The moment the people like the title, they will click on the title. They will read the abstract. The moment they read the abstract, then they download the paper and then they will read it. And then they will cite it. So selecting the right title, very, very important. You can select the title whenever you search and no one finds this, how they're going to cite how they can cite it. And also the keywords. Because these keywords are very, very important. Because these keywords, uh, carefully, because these are the keywords that will be put, uh, that will be used for the search engine. Okay? So please select the right keyword. It will, don't just simply the keywords, select the right keywords. And there are some softwares actually which gives you the optimizer, how to select the right keywords. For example, you have, uh, I'll give you an example. You have a converter and the inverter. Which one is the most likely to be searched on? Automatically the converter, for example. So you have to put the converter instead of the inverter. And they can mean the same things, okay? So uh, if you have a website, okay, or whatever social media, try to improve it and update it by putting, as I say, putting the titles or putting the links, if it is an open access, share and uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, with others and also you can put your emails where people can request the papers from you and then you can send to personal email that's not uh, infringing the copyright means if they if you put your email you put the website and then uh, put the detail of the papers and so on and so forth and then if you if you for example you put a note there if you need the full paper, please send me an email. People, you put your email and then people write to you and then you can send them the PDF file. Okay? Save citations, as I said just now, it's, yeah, you have to save, cite some of your papers because sometimes with your research is continuation. Okay? Continuation means you do a part here and then you continue doing it. So this is, you have to cite the previous work. Actually, when you cite the previous work, uh, Sometimes is a must. You have to you have to cite your previous work. Otherwise, you are maybe you are cheating. Okay, why? I give you an example. So I, I for example, I publish. I I have written some work. I done some work and I publish paper on it, a part of the work. And then later on, I did some other work and then I published another paper. So if I don't cite the previous paper, when people read this, oh, they see this is something uh, you know, uh, new, no, no, no one has done it before. So people will think that this 
yeah, this is a very good work because they think this is a real big work. Big means it takes a long time to do, and this publishing here. But if I tell, in, I, if I cite my previous work, so I'm telling the people I have done actually previous work, and I publish part of it, and this is a continuation. So this is the the what, what they say the mass site. And then can give you a personal experience. Uh, we, we wrote a paper in a conference. Uh, it's an IEEE conference uh, and the PERS for Electronic Society. And then uh, the, we, we go to the conference and we present the, the, the paper. And uh, in the meantime, we start writing an IEEE transaction paper. And we submit the conference, and then also we submit the transaction paper. The transaction papers goes, you know, a few revisions: revision one, revision two, revision three. Conference paper being published immediately goes on the IEEE Explore. In the revision two of the IEEE transactions, one of the reviewers, you know what he did? He suggested rejection. Why? Because we didn't cite. The conference paper because they say the authors have published part of this work in a conference paper and they have not cited this is a self citation but and then we need to explain yeah the submission of this conference happens in parallel with the transactions so we were unable to cite the paper because the conference paper have not been published yet only then they accept and process. And we have to add, and actually in the last uh, version of the, pay, the journals, we, we cited the conference paper. So this is the, the case where it is a must, because we do want people to see that you are uh, slicing the work. Slicing means you cut the, the big work, you cut it into small pieces, publish, publish here, publish there, publish here. But in this case, if your work is a continuation, you have your mass self sites but as i said just now also you cannot over self site as i said just now the threshold is 10 percent means if you have total yeah the the, the general is around 20 percent but as i say the better you always keep it at uh, always keep it as uh, low as uh, 10 percent OK, that is the, the best for me. Always keep it below 10%, OK? All right, so yeah, you may, you may request to call it to sites, but must, must, must be only related work, OK? So that's uh, very, very important, OK? Yeah, self citations. I think I have explained this one just now. Very, very important. And then uh, uh, you need to be very important and you always try to maintain within the, the percentage. And I can I can uh, tell you some of the the authors. You see, self citation: fifty percent, fifty-three percent, fifty-seven, forty-one, sixty-six percent. This is not acceptable at all. So this, uh, this you can search uh, different, from different countries, you know, from different parts of the world. When you have self citations, I hope now they have uh, improved significantly. But this is not acceptable at all. So uh, as I said just now, the, the the review papers tend to attract more citations compared to original. Okay, okay. Yeah, open access journals, as I said just now, it uh, uh, makes the, the work widely seen and widely accessed. OK, uh, but they tend not to have a very high impact factor. Most of the. But now I think nowadays it's improving, uh, it's becoming an, improving slowly, slowly. And uh, this is a good uh, actually choice and it's moving to open, uh, open size. OK. This is some of the review papers as they see just now. For example, uh, review uh, papers in journals, okay? In one year, the citations is very, very high. Yeah, same thing, so review papers, you can see. A review, okay, a review, 
okay a review so we can see uh, a review here see a review a review a review paper so you can see this is within one year uh, attracts almost 400 citations which is very very high. okay yeah yeah you can see all review papers huh? so that's why i see review papers tend to attract more and more citations okay and i think this is uh i think uh, i have uh, passed my time and uh, uh, as uh, as a summary okay so uh, it's always this citations it's uh, as i say it's is the quality of the work that attracts citations it's not that you but is you produce a good work always will attract uh, good citations so maybe now i stop i will open if there any questions thank you thank you sir thank you Sir, uh, I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah, could you please let us know the ways for uh, international collaboration, sir, for our research? Sorry? The I ways you have, uh, you have pointed, you have explained about uh, good research would include of three to four factors, right? One of them yes. is, uh, one of them is about uh, that, um, Collaboration, international collaboration. First, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think, yeah. International collaborations. You, you mean how to to do international collaborations or? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. International, yeah. International collaborations. You know, it's um, it's very important. One of the way, actually, which is the, the best way actually to to start or initiate the international collaboration, is attending the conferences. When you attend the good international conferences, usually we meet experts, and most of the time you go to the conference to present your work. Okay. When you present your work, then you will see the people doing the, the, the similar work in your area. So this is what we call networking, and then you get to know them. After you go from the conference, you drop them an email, and then you start discussing, and then start working together. This is one way, and that's what, that's what I, I used to do. You know. Okay. And uh, and uh, and it's very e easy and very effective because you meet the people in person, you see what they have done, they see what you have done, and then it will be easy to interact. And then you have like one or two days together there, and you get to know them maybe two or three times, and that's it. Another way, which sometimes maybe people doesn't want to to, to approach it, which is yeah, you can write to someone. I give you my personal experience. Actually, I, I had a master student, a master by research students. Uh, he was working on uh, on predictive control. Okay, and then uh, after he joined, I asked him to to prepare a summary of the literature review of what people have done in these topics. Yeah, and then he did the PowerPoint presentations and present to me. What I noticed. The last slide which is the references. I may, I notice that there is uh, like four or five references from the same author. I see who is this guy. Then I see, can you give me the papers? I, I, I look into the papers and I see this paper, this person have done, he is uh, Marco Rivera from Chile. He has done a lot of work in the same topic on the predictive control. Then I see if uh, if I want to do the research in the same topics, it will take me another 10 years to reach to the same level what this uh, Marco Rivera reach. So what I did, I just dropped him an email. I just dropped an email. Uh, Dear Marco Rivera, how are you? This is this. I have read your papers. This this this, and we are very interested. We are initiating this work. We are starting this work to in our university, and we would like to collaborate if you are if you are interested. And the next day, reply. And that's that's an indication. Researchers usually will not take more than one week to reply your email. If someone takes more than three, four days to reply your email, just forget it. It's not a good collaborator. 
Maybe if it happens once, maybe it's in a holiday, maybe possible, but usually researchers who is always current, always day, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, they reply. They reply immediately. Oh, see, I have master students. What do you think working together? Yeah, he said, okay, good. I appoint him as a co-supervisor. Master students, from that research, from master students, we used to meet, we don't have the Skype or whatever, you know, uh, WebEx or whatever, you know, we don't have this. We only have, during the time, we only have uh, uh, Skype. So we meet through Skype and discuss and so on. We produce six journal papers, six with the impact factor from master students. And then the student graduates. And I have, till today, I have never met this person. So this, that's what I say, that, that is the interest, because people will always look into uh, uh, interest, because there is no one who knows everything. Everyone knows something. I know something, you know something, the other person knows something. When we put them together, we can do something better. And that is what collaborations. And this is, don't think that you only the person thinks about the collaboration everywhere. Everywhere around the world, they are thinking of the same way. Everyone wants to collaborate. Thank you. Any questions? Another questions? Uh, I, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, Prof. Sad for his presentations. I have just one question concerning the review papers. Uh, actually, for the review papers, should be uh, on the topic or should be uh, like uh, after med after how the time uh, or how many publications uh, an author or team um, can make uh, like a review paper and that can be uh, that can have a high chances to be accepted. Uh, if you can uh, respond, please. For the, 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 the review papers, usually the review papers, as I said just now, it should be written by some experts. What does mean experts? Expert means uh, a student can be an expert. Okay, students who have done the research PhD, and then he finishes PhD can be an expert, because he will be expert in that area. Someone who have read the literature, okay, and able to summarize the work that's been done in that topic, on that specific topic. And uh, just to let you know, a review paper does not mean you summarize what other people have done only. Okay, you are just you are not going just to tell these people have done this, these people have done this, these people have done this, and that's it. No. The most important part in the review paper is the recommendation. What are the recommendations? Means you are giving direction. What is the direction of the research in this topic? And even nowadays, some review papers also you need to include some initial results. Means you show that you actually you are working on these topics. You cannot just simply uh, read uh, 100 papers and then summarize and write the review paper. No, you must support these review papers, as I said just now, as by some results. some results and also the, in, the future direction. How this the, 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 the work or this research in these topics is moving and what is the future uh, is going to be? Okay, like uh, future uh, revisions. Uh, can yes, be... what is the future? Yeah. How the future will... Uh, we call will be that's very important. Or you may, for example, suggest some applications. What is the uh, applications of this, for example, this uh, this work? Where we can apply it? Currently, for example, we are applying in a certain area. Okay, we can suggest to apply it in a different areas, which helps to improve, for example, that. So, the review papers is not only a summary. Yes, the main bulk, the main import, the main uh, content is the what other researchers have done, okay? But you have to add your own contribution. What is your own contribution in the review paper? Review paper. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for giving the us feedback of this.
this uh, lecture is very good because uh, everybody writing that uh, very good session, nice presentation. Thank you. So, thank you. And then uh, many information. Um, so, sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Chitrama, I would like to call upon Dr. Kusushi from Nepal University, Department of Computer Science, for the next presentation. A small introduction about the professor. He has 38 publications and 119 citations in his work. He is uh, currently working on the optimal control of tidal renewable energy conversion systems based PMSP system testing using PIL experiments, hybrid energy sources, and smart grids. He's having skills and expertise in the field of system modeling, power electronics, electrical power engineering, power system simulation, renewable energy technologies, power generation, power converters, power systems, and analysis MATLAB simulation. I would request you to kindly give us the presentation. Yusuf, can you see the screen? Hello, Yusuf. Can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yes. Okay. Uh... Uh, I can uh, I should. Can you see your screen? Okay. Is it okay? Yes, yes. Full skin, full skin. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I should. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Bindara, for uh, this invitation. And uh, it's my pleasure to present. Uh, uh, the international workshop on research methodology and engineering approach. Uh, this presentations, uh, short presentations, which is uh, titled the research formulation literature literature review necessary to define research problem. Uh, it's present me, uh, Dr. Doctor is uh, postdoctor uh, from, from the University in Prague in the Czech Republic. Okay, so uh, we did in, uh, four, uh, four uh, sub items, which is why is the research problem is important? How to define a research problem in uh, your uh, project or uh, papers or something which is uh, related to research? A little review and uh, we will and conclude with some conclusions. Okay, uh, this uh, presentation should be more suitable or which is more important for uh, a starting uh, like young researcher or like a PhD student which just started to do his research. So maybe uh, uh, from my experience, uh, my short experience is uh, it is a very important to cite some of these points uh for the new researcher which can be like uh misled or uh, don't have how don't know how to start uh first paper his first research important in uh to the first important or the first important step uh 
far or to uh, redact or to start a research uh, research topic, you should uh, have a problem or something to resolve or something to discuss about it. Because if you you cannot discuss or you cannot do research or something which is done, you should do research or contributions uh, to the uh, scientist community by uh, finding some problems which uh, what uh, which not which has not been resolved or which is not discussed for uh, by others by other researchers by other community scientists so your topic is interesting and you have a lot uh, to say about without a way research program, you are likely to end up with an unfocused and an unmanageable project or research literature. Because if you don't know or if you don't define clearly what is the problems, what is uh, the, the objectives or the, uh, the problems that you are uh, going to do some research or you are going to resolve, you cannot interest uh, like the scientific community or you cannot uh, uh, directly your papers or your work will be not accepted or uh, will not be interested. Interesting. Sorry. So you may end up repeating what repeating what other people have already said, doing a clear purpose and, uh, and justifications. I just uh, uh, like I just said. So, what is the solutions? How can define how uh, what is the research problem important whether you are planning your thesis starting a research paper or writing a research proposal the research problem is important as it's the first step towards knowing exactly what you will do and why okay so How to define a research problem? How to find the research problem? So firstly, what is the research problem? A research problem is a statement about an area of concern, a condition to be improved, a difficulty to be eliminated, or a troubling question that exists in scholarly literature, in theory, or in practice that points to the need for meaningful understanding and deliberate investigations. And they can also uh, add it's the core of your uh, research. Uh, if you don't, as I just said, if you don't have something to resolve, something to uh, discuss about it, something which is wrong in some area or drawbacks that are not resolved uh, yet. So this, if you take this problem and you contribute to resolve, to uh, inform the community, scientific community about this problem. So uh, your research cannot be interesting. Yeah. You will not be uh, interesting for the other researcher or uh, if you resolve something which exists yet, so it's not interesting. So this is that I, I would like to uh, focus on this point. The first, the step or the important step to start research work, you should firstly find something to resolve, something which was wrong, something which is uh, not discussed yet, and which is, uh, as you can see, it's a problem that should be resolved. So, uh, except that uh, you cannot work on something which is not uh, like real or which is not uh, realizable. Yes, um, something which exists. So that's what uh, we'll discuss about uh, later, which is another important step to uh, define the research problem. So how to define the research problem? The research problem is like a statement or something uh, that should be resolved. Okay, it's a problem. In can be uh, each topics, each area has its brown bag. So, uh, students, the PhD student, 
the young researcher, the new researcher uh, should focus or uh, his topic so in the way he can find something that should be resolved or that need to be improved. This is also uh, research, uh, problematics. Uh, it is not, um, it is not uh, uh, important just to find something new or some, uh, to find uh, new problems. Okay, we can improve something that has been done before. You can, for example, look uh, to uh, papers or research work that has been done, and you uh, find that this uh, work can be improved by adding something or by uh, re removing something or by uh, uh, like repairing something there. Okay, that can be uh, also. Uh, uh, start for a new project. Okay. So the purpose of a problem statement is to firstly introduce the reader to the importance of the topic being studied. So uh, it means that when you do the research, for example, uh, I will directly uh, speak. For example, for the, the researcher, the most important part is to uh, publish the paper. Okay. Uh, if I focus uh, or uh, if I generalize for the scientific community for the researcher okay? the important part is to uh, successfully um, publish your research work so to, to publish your research work your paper will be reviewed for, uh, by experts in the area so uh, they should or you should specify exactly in your paper or in your research work what is exactly the problematics? Because if you don't have the problematics, if, you, if your, your work has uh, have no, uh, don't have uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, why this work has been done, why this uh, work should be uh, published, so it will not it will be rejected okay? because there is no some this this work the. Uh, don't uh, contribute to the research community. It can be something that has been done before, uh, reformulated, or uh, just uh, something which, okay, so you should, this paper or this work should have exactly something or the, what is uh, the problematics, should be clearly stated. Otherwise, maybe uh, the people or the experts will not understand what to, what is the uh, the aim of this work? Okay. Secondly, places the problem into a particular context that defines the parameters of what is to be investigated. I just explained. Also, can be the same explanations. Provides the framework for reporting the results and indicates what is probably necessary to conduct to study and explain how the funding will present these informations. So, what we find. Uh, something or a problem that should be uh, resolved or uh, for what research works will be conducted or should be conducted. So you should uh, also tell why why we should start or why this problem is Okay, it's not also efficient just to find something that should be resolved. But why exactly uh, this problem is interesting for the scientific community? Because it can be there is something uh, or some problem or some drawbacks, but they are not. Their effect is really uh, reduced or minor. So why uh, we'll do something or is a big research work for this some, uh, or, or for problems that uh, really their impact is really uh, small, small, smaller. Okay. So, now formulation of research problem. So, uh, you have found something that should be interesting to do research work on it, or you uh, find or you have uh, an idea to improve uh, someone's as. Uh, research work or papers or, okay? So how to formulate, how to uh, 
uh, write this uh, this for uh, this problem uh, how to uh, create this research work research problem enables you to make a focus of your study clear to yourself and target readers focus your paper on providing relevant data to address it a problem statement is an effective and essential tool to keep you on track with the research and evaluate it so the when you state the problems so you uh, you tell to the researcher this work is focusing on this problematic okay so here are the major steps to formulate the research problem so how to formulate it exactly how to make it uh, clear for the readers for the researchers or for any community that uh, will paper or your research work and try to read it and get information. Firstly, you should specify a research project. First one is the objective for the paper. Secondly, review its context and thirdly, alternative approaches. Okay. So the research problematic is the, um, in the most research works papers that uh, that has been published from my uh, short experience, and you can see this. I have found or uh, summarized these three, three points. Okay. So, what is this, uh, the first one? What is the second one? And what is the third one? Uh, research objectives. Here we have an example. Okay. Let's start. This is a paper. You have how to find the objectives, how to define your objectives of the paper. Because the objectives, uh, the, the review literature, and also the approaches that have been done, or this is important to specify exactly or to deduce the research problem, okay, or the problematics of the, uh, of the work. So firstly, you have objectives. So to write the paper, to prepare your research work, uh, submitted for a journal or uh, for any institute that uh, publish or uh, accept works or that uh, will give importance to uh, teamwork or research works, you should first say what is the objective of this work. Okay, so what is the objective of this work? What are the objectives of this work? This is the first step. Uh, this is important, important in any uh, work, especially for the papers, if you want, or if a young researcher or one would publish a paper that should specify clearly uh, gives in the paper what is objectives. Because without objectives, there is nothing to do, okay? So, you can hear an example for a paper. The main can be write it directly like this. The main uh, contributions and motivations of this work, or uh, like the main objectives of this work, include the extraction, for example, maximum power from PyW, integrating the grid, focusing on. You, know, you can see. So you can give objectives. What you know, what this work is addressing exactly? Okay, for the uh, for the scientific community. Okay. Another example. This is another paper. Okay, you can have here. See here. Uh, this paper is uh, the, the authors have directly uh, given what is the objectives. This paper addressed the following two main objectives: controlling the suicide, and after that, the second task is to improve it. You can see. So you should clearly, directly, not to uh, like uh, make it uh, hard complicated or directly write it simple clear objectives of the paper are this this and this okay directly uh, not to make it like uh, it will be uh, uh, like uh, uh, good or, or uh, speed uh, will be good or uh, make it bigger explain three sentences, two sentences, 
objectives. Objectives are this, are this, are this. Objective of the paper is this point. Nothing else, nothing's. Uh, okay. So, but uh, someone can uh, ask me where we should um, state the objectives. Okay. So, there is three ways or three different uh, methods. So, it can be stated uh, for the first one here in the introductions, uh, in the in the abstract, and we can uh, we cannot repeat them in the introduction just to refer to them uh, in the introductions. The objectives uh, of, the of this paper are stated uh, are previously stated in this uh, in the abstract. You can see uh, you can tell the uh, right like this. Okay. The second you can directly put it in the introduction without uh, uh, give them uh, give it, uh, the objectives in the abstract. You can just put them in uh, uh, the introductions. And the first, uh, first or the, the last one is make them in both in abstract and also in the introductions. I think it would be, uh, for my in my opinion, the best way because maybe uh, you know the first the first uh, steps that researcher or young researcher uh, when he uh, read your paper is he will directly read the abstract. So maybe if he, if he, if he, he don't find what is the uh, or they will not read the objectives of paper, uh, maybe your paper should be not interested or he will not uh, continue the, uh, to read the, the paper. Okay, so we don't attract the reader. In my opinion is to make it in both, in, in both parts, in abstract, and also in the introductions to uh, attract the reader uh, read completely your work. And maybe as Brock said, the previous uh, presentations, he can, the, your paper as is, maybe he is a good level of work, so he can cite your paper also. Okay, so the presentations, abstract, uh, clear presentations of your objectives, Clear two, three sentences, but clear and short. Okay. Now, examples of review its context and environment. So, it is necessary to work hard to define and test all kinds of environmental variables to make your project successful. So, to do that, okay. This step can help you define if the important the findings of your study will derive on data to be worth, uh, worth considering identifying combination effective uh, the methods to all of them okay so here uh, you can see that you can make like the review context what is exactly here the review context can be like the formation of problematics, the drawbacks that are existing in the topics. Okay, so uh, here uh, I will uh, focus on something. You have in the paper, firstly, what are the major or what are the drawbacks in the topics that all uh, researchers or all objectives or all uh, works done on the topics, okay, topic that or your file, okay. What are the major problems? Because you know, in, uh, in each area, there is problems that which are really uh, important, and the research community try uh, by to get this uh, big problem. Resolve it, but they try by uh, always contributing like short work or higher work. But even with the higher uh, work or research work, they don't resolve it completely. So there is some problems that are still now not resolved in each area. And each team, each research worker, each researcher try to uh, 
uh, get or try to give some uh, some solutions to uh, try uh, to uh, be more closely uh, to resolve these uh, problems. Okay, so the review context, in my opinion, is to give what are the major problems in your file. Okay, and then after that, we have the first one is to specify exactly what your work exactly or, or why on what your work is focusing in these topics or in this review context or these problematics which are really big in your topic what exactly you are or your work is contributing or what is the problematic that you are you are addressing in this year okay so here we have an example we'll give uh, okay this is the uh, this is the example for the review context and the now the alternative approaches okay so you here we specify exactly what is or what we are addressing here so for example i have to address the aforementioned issue or the context the big context here you have uh, like something uh, many uh, researchers have done This and this and this. Okay, All right. So there is, you can see it like this. There is many uh, like uh, authors or papers on this industrial uh, patterns that has been. Done. You can see, you can say it like this uh, for this one, this one. Uh, this author has presented this, but this is the but they didn't do this 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 okay so each literature or each paper you will see what they are not or what they didn't focus on it and you uh, find it like important or you focus on it so you will paper from these steps here and here and here each each word and what is the drawback each word what is the drawback this is we make or this is your problematic will make your problematic because not directly specify what is the problematic directly like this is the problematic but you should give it the face step why your problematic uh why you are doing this why you are focusing on this problematics exactly okay so you you must specify it like step by step or one by one and then after that you can construct your uh, uh, your problematic so this work done this but they didn't do this this work they have have did this but uh, they forgot or they didn't do this okay because each paper will not focus on uh, every uh, problem so the if you will focus on some problems only as i said previously after that you have specified each word, what is his problem, each word, what is his problem. Here, I will uh, just point on something. One, uh, you cite a paper. This paper should be uh, directly relevant to the problematics that you are addressing. Should not uh, cite something or some papers only to cite them. Okay, You should cite something or uh, on what you have uh, based your work okay it's a very important so now we'll move to the next presentation so now we are addressing like as we said why uh, why the research or the pro the research problem uh, is important how to uh, formulate the research problem. We have addressed these two points. So now, the which is covered in, uh, in each paper, each work, each research work, we do, we do short or it can be like a higher uh, or short literature review. Why it's important? Because 
this step is very, very important. And it's uh, the common step uh, which each researcher has started. You know, when you start to work, new work, or to find to find the research problem, as I said previously, if we should find a problematic or something that should be resolved, okay, or improved. But to find this, this drawbacks, you should get it from somewhere, from some previous work, okay. So you should write, read, read, read many literature uh, papers, many, uh, or to see many uh, industrial uh, constructions to find something. So the source of uh, the, uh, the, the, the research problem is from the literature review, from where did you find this problem? Where do you deduce this problematics? So you should put this, uh, this step, this step, the, the, where did you find this problem? Uh, uh, you should put it also, you should say, uh, cited in the paper. You know why? Because directly, this is that I'm uh, trying to address in this paper. But I will uh, come and tell you, where did you find, how did you uh, deduce this problematics? What, uh, what uh, the proof that this is a problematic? So you should give the history, the history, how did you find this problematics? Okay, so that's why I would read uh, the history of your papers or the research, the literature that you read. Ah, yes, exactly. Yeah, it's the problem, it's a problem. Yeah, it's problematic. Yeah, uh, there is the previous, sometimes in uh, papers, uh, some authors or the major part do something that they really appreciate to give the drawbacks of uh, their present work they have published. They give some drawbacks at the end of the conclusions. Or, for example, yeah, generally you can find it at the end of con uh, the conclusion. Uh, the authors are uh, informed that uh, uh, this presented work has some drawbacks and uh, that can be uh, resolved in future works okay this is very important because if you inform the future reader of your paper that there is some doubt it would be uh, very easy for the researcher to, to find this problem it's uh, yeah Let's start by this okay so you help your uh, your colleague or your uh, or the future researcher to start by something because it's very really difficult uh, by uh, uh, according to the growing growing research uh, community it's very really, uh, difficult to find uh, problematics or something to uh, start with so uh, this point i think my opinion if you have, uh, uh, you, or if if you can add the drawbacks, or uh, or by what the future researcher can uh, to improve your work, it it will be really uh, appreciated to do to this point in the, your paper or your research work. So, as I said, the literature review is the history of how did you find this uh, research problem or problematics of your work, okay? So, literature review is a survey of scholarly topic. It provides an overview of current knowledge, allowing you to identify relevant theories, methods, and gaps in the existing research, okay? Right? Literature review involves finding relevant publications, such books, journals, uh, also uh, can be uh, conference. Okay, 
critically analyze them and explaining what on so this is the literature yeah uh, actually um, next speaker will speak, uh, with you please kindly summarize the Yusuf? yes okay okay uh is there any problems with the presentation no no actually time is uh, uh okay 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 uh sorry so uh, okay, just, uh, uh so, okay, can, uh, can you guys summarize yeah yeah firstly so here uh, just an example how uh, to do the summarize the literature review and i have an example here okay uh, and just an example how to do so to cite all the previous paper uh, why did you find the, this uh, problematic and we conclude so this is the the, 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 uh, the major steps to do uh, to find this uh, or to formulate the, the research problematics firstly do the literature review uh, read many papers or research works find the drawbacks, drawbacks identifications and then you can formulate your uh, problematic uh, thank you very much uh, for your listening thank you Sue. thank you Mom. Is there Thank, any you. Uh, thank you. Thank uh, you. Are there any questions from participants? Thank you for the session, sir. Um, we'd like to invite Dr. Uma Hanigo for the next session. A small introduction about uh, the center. Dr. Uma Habiba is currently a professor and head in the Department of Electronics and Communications Engineering at Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research, Chennai, India. He has over 24 years of teaching experience in reputed engineering colleges. He has received Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Award for Teaching Excellence in 2017 by Marina Labs, Research and Development, Chennai. She obtained her B.E. degree in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Institute of Road and Transport Technology in the year 1996 and her master's degree in Applied Electronics from Mohammed Sadat Engineering College in 2001. She has completed her PhD in the field of RF and Microwave from Anna University in 2012. She has published more than 100 research papers in leading international journals and conferences and she has delivered many guest lectures at various institutions and universities. She is an active reviewer in peer-reviewed journals related to RF and microwave. She received funding from AICTE Modrops from RF and microwave lab worth 13 lakhs and from ISRO Respon project Reflect Array Antenna worth 21 lakhs. She is a recognized supervisor under Anna University, Chennai. Her research interest includes RF filter design, modern antennas, RF energy harvester and Electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compact. We welcome you, ma'am, for the session. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, my presentation topic is research design and engineering approach, case study and hypothesis. I am Dr. H. Uma Habiba, Professor and Head, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. Before going to talk about the research design and approach. What is research? When you talk about research, 
there are so many definitions. Uh, one definition I found more suitable is research is a systematic investigation into and study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. Here, yeah, systematic investigation is based on scientific or it may be based on research subjects and the contest. When we talk about materials, there are two types, physical and intellectual. Similarly, sources are two types, tangible, intangible. When we talk about established facts, it may be a principles or generalism knowledge. And new conclusions are based on evidence based results. So once again, research is a systematic investigation into and a study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. Then we should talk about objectives and motivation in research. So first of all, for what purpose we are doing this research? So research is uh, nothing but uh, uh, a long term investment, a long term life journey. So for what purpose we are doing this research? So purpose of research is to discover answers to questions through the application of scientific procedures. The main aim of research is to find out the truth which is hidden and which has not been discovered as yet. Indirectly, we can say it is a new discovery. So generally research objectives, we can say it like to gain familiarity with the phenomenon or to determine the frequency with which something occurs or to test a hypothesis of a casual relationship between variables. Generally, we can give research objectives like this. Then when you come to research design and engineering approach, what is research design? How can we frame research design so that it is very useful for doing research? For, for example, if you take an uh, architect, he will prepare a blueprint before uh, he approves construction. Similarly, if you consider an artist, he will give a, I mean, uh, a design before he start execute. Uh, it's like if you consider this uh, researcher, he should have a research design. So research design is a framework of research methods and techniques chosen by the researcher. Research design allows researcher to hone in on research methods that are suitable for the subject matters and set up their studies up for success. So when we talk about the uh, research design, it explains the type of research. It may be experimental, survey, research, or uh, correlational, or semi-experimental, or it may be a descriptive type. Three main types of designs for research are data collection, measurement, and analysis. See, when we talk about the research design, uh, it stands for advanced planning of uh, methods to be adapted for collecting the relevant data and the techniques to be used in their analysis or it, it can be used in their design. Research design needed because it facilitates the smooth conducting of various research operations, thereby making research as efficient for and uh, minimal expenditure of effort and time and money. So the research design is needed. Research design has a significant impact on the reliability of the results of time. So these are the uh, importance of uh, research design. For example, uh, I want to uh, include this uh, case study. Uh, the topic of uh, this uh, research is given by design and analysis of embedded resonator based ultra wide band filter topologies. Actually, this is my uh, PhD research topic. I want to share some of the experiences what I have faced in my research chat research uh, when I'm doing my research what are the challenges I have faced I want to share my experience so my research topic is design and analysis of embedded resonator based ultra wideband filter topologies 
see this topic uh, if you see this topic this topic uh, says exactly what is my research problem how i framed my research problem what are the work i have done what are the results i obtained so design and analysis so i have done the design i have done analysis of embedded resonator based ultra wide band filter topologies oh uh, here filter is uh, nothing but a band pass filter ultra wide band band pass filter so topologies means uh, many number of uh, filter topologies we design so embedded resonator based so all filters are embedded with the resonators uh, basically resonator is a frequency selective circuit so uh, we used uh, many resonator structure uh, for designing this ultra wide band band pass filter topologies so this uh, this topic deals with uh, what are the work we have done uh, what are the analysis we have done what are the design we have done what are the concepts we used and what what may be the final outcome so like that it gives all the details so like that we need to design the uh, uh, topic we need to frame the topic for our research according to our plan according to our uh, uh, aim according to our output so before uh, going to discuss about uh, this research topic um, just i want to give some introduction ultra wideband uh, is nothing but uh, according to fcc federal communication commission uh, it is a license free band so 3.1 gigahertz to 10.6 gigahertz is allotted for ultra wideband so generally uh, wideband is greater than 1.5 gigahertz but as per fcc definition it is greater than 500 megahertz it is considered as ultra wideband so uh, the aim is to design ultra wideband filter topologies then after that what are the design challenges in the design of ultra wideband filter topologies when you consider high frequency band pass filter so obviously we have to consider parasitic and transmission line effects so by considering all these parasitic and uh, transmission line effects we can design this filter without uh, so we, we cannot uh, we cannot avoid it fully 100 percent but uh, by avoiding all these parasitic and transmission line effects we can uh, we can uh, design a high performance filter so with respect to design parameters or design requirements i have uh, taken uh, eight parameters minimum insertion loss minimum return loss wide bandwidth minimum fast band ripple fine selectivity high stop and rejection constant group delay compactness so my filter should be a high performance filter so that it should not have any parasitic and transmission line effects it's a high frequency component passive component and uh, the filter performance is analyzed with all these eight parameters like the like that i started my design so when you are doing um, uh, research the next uh, step is elements of research design so what are the elements we can use for uh, doing the research so that uh, the research is uh, progressed so uh, generally the elements of uh, research designs are of what purpose we are doing the research and then a research approach it may be quantitative and uh, qualitative and uh, uh, the data collection method what uh, what kind of data collection method we are using and data analysis method and the time dimension what kind of uh, uh, time duration uh, we are going to spend for the research and study setting and measurement and op operationalization so these are the uh, elements of research so in my research uh, i have i have clearly i have defined the problem uh, the purpose is uh, uh, designing of a high frequency ultra wide band band pass filter mm, uh, this filter the importance of this filter is if you take any ultra wide band is a license free band so uh, uh, we can expect a lot of applications 
uh, wireless applications under ultra wideband frequency. So if you take any wireless uh, communication uh, transmitter side, both transmitter side and receiver side, filter is an important component. So uh, if I designed a wide band filter, ultra wide band filter, it covers the complete UW band or it may be a lower band or upper band. It is very useful for any kind of uh, ultra wide band wireless communication. So that is my purpose. And uh, research approach, according to my research, my research approach includes both qualitative and quantitative. I have done a lot of uh, literature survey, a lot of uh, uh, theory kind of uh, analysis, uh, also uh, the qualitative. Uh, uh, you know, uh, data kind of analysis. See what are the uh, all the all eight parameters. How all all eight parameters are varying with respect to design, with respect to technology, with respect to uh, size. So everything we analyzed. And what are the uh, substrate materials uh, we can use? Uh, uh, and what about the cost? And uh, how uh, the performances will vary? Uh, what kind of tool we are we can use? So in the data collection method, it will include and data analysis method. So here also we can include uh, all kind of uh, uh, this data collection and data analysis. What what tools we can use, which tool is uh, uh, accurate for doing this kind of design. Um, um, uh, what what kind of materials, uh, substrate materials we can use um, for, for this high frequency, which material will go. Uh, best performance, which materials low cost compared to the other one. So like that we have done all the analysis. And the study setting. Uh, yes, we uh, we have a group, uh, UG group, PG group and PhD group and, uh, and the faculty group and the research group. So like that uh, we have participated in uh, many uh, events, uh, conferences and workshops. And we conducted also so like that uh, many types of study setting we used and the time dimension uh, when we are uh, doing this research when I am doing this research. So time setting is according to university norms minimum three years maximum six years. So I plan to complete my research before six years at least. So like that uh, my uh, journey of research is went on. Uh, so generally when we talk about elements of research design, we can consider all these elements. That is purpose of uh, research and uh, research approach. It may be qualitative or quantitative and uh, what kind of data collection method we are using, uh, what kind of data analysis methods we are using and uh, time dimensions uh, 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 and uh, study setting uh, and measurement and operationalization. So uh, here in, in my research, uh, after fabricating a component, we have done a measurement. Uh, the measurement results finally compared with the simulated one and analytical one. Then next, the characteristics of research design. Uh, when we talk about characteristics of research design, uh, we can consider these four uh, characteristics. One is neutrality, reliability, validity, and generalist. So neutrality is nothing but uh, when we start our research, initially we need to assume some output data. So we are going to get this kind of uh, uh, this value of uh, output data, or we can say it is uh, uh, it is a, it has uh, specifications. Okay. So we are we are doing design for this particular specification. So we are going to achieve the same uh, specification as the output design output. So neutrality is nothing but whatever the assumption we have done, uh, it should be equal to uh, the output what we achieved. So if there is if there is an uh, bias in the assumption and uh, the output, it is it is not a neutral. It should be a neutral one. Uh, so minimum biasing is acceptable in research level. In product level, uh, very difficult. But in research level, minimum bias is acceptable. But uh, but we have to maintain a neutrality between what what data we have assumed as a specification, the same output uh, we need to achieve. So like that, we need to do our design. We need to progress our design. And the reliability. When we talk about our uh, reliability, uh, how our uh, design is uh, more reliable for the output. 
see we need to do a accurate design we need to do a accurate design how accurate design is possible uh, we have to uh, do analysis uh, we have to use the formulas we need to do the analysis accurately so that our design is uh, more accurate and uh, if, if it is a hardware component we need to choose the uh, component uh, reliable component so it should not have any tolerances so like that uh, if we choose uh, you know all uh, less loss component all uh, tolerable intolerable uh, components we can maintain this reliability in the design so you are a design is reliable then automatically you will get the good output uh, as what you assumed what what you have taken as a specification that is what a reliability and validity how can we uh, maintain this validity validity see suppose for the, any design uh, if we are using a tool we have to choose a tool uh, it should be a accurate one uh, for example in my research i used the tool uh, uh, advanced design software uh, ads software advanced design system software mm, i uh, used the tool for uh, uh, designing my band pass filter topology uh, what i have achieved in the simulation um, is uh, somewhat different from the measurement so it says that uh, it says that even though uh, i have chosen uh, the other components are perfectly uh, but i got some deviation in, in my uh, result so that may be due to a tool so if you choose very accurate tool uh, you can get more accurate result because uh, tool wise also the result will vary that we need to understand when you are doing research uh, for example um the, the tools uh, for a 3d kind of uh, design uh, in in antenna design uh, in antenna design 3d kind of antenna design the tool hfss is more accurate according to a researcher uh, uh, the tool hfss high frequency simulation software that tool is more accurate uh, compared to other tool um so so it's choosing a tool what we are using for the design is very important uh, it deals with the characteristics of validity and generalization so whatever the output we got it should be suitable for uh, a population uh, we, we we cannot say it, it is suitable for only samples it should be suitable for a population applicable for a population so these are the four uh, characteristics of uh, a research design and again uh, when you come to my case study uh, that is a design and analysis of embedded resonator based ultraviolet band filter topologies i have uh, designed one filter uh, just in the previous session uh, dr yusuf said the importance of a literature review and even in literature review we can do some analysis uh, we can do some synthesis it is very useful for uh, starting your design start uh, I mean uh, starting your research uh, it is very true and i am doing my phd i have done the same uh, here uh, i have uh, uh, from the literature i have taken uh, different types of uh, band pass filters uh, by applying some technologies like uh, defected ground structure uh, like a uh, defected ground structure in the form of circular slot or two circular slot or three circular slot or uh, a double slit uh, complementary split ring resonator so like that i have added uh, different types of uh, defected ground structures in the back side of the um, pcb uh, a pcb generally a pcb kind of component consists of a uh, top conductor and uh, then substrate and the bottom ground so here uh, my passive component of uh, band pass filter component is uh, is in the form of pcb uh, so uh, when i am comparing the uh, simulated results of all four these band pass filter structure i have uh, uh, i have uh, simulated and compared all the results so from the results it is very clear um, the performance of each and every filter topology how it is very see here um, uh, the red one is with the one circular slot for a one circular slot here you know in a, in a, in upper side selectivity is very good but in lower side it is not good uh, 
uh, when we come to the two circular slot, uh, both side is a round foot. When you come to three circular slot, uh, in lower side is very, very good. Upper side is a round foot. When you come to four circular slot, uh, it is uh, bandwidth is wider, but uh, both in a lower and upper is not good. So because according to our definition, um, uh, ultra wide band, uh, lower ultra wide band is given by uh, three to uh, five gigahertz. Uh, three to five gigahertz or it may be three to six gigahertz. So uh, the performance is compared uh, by doing simulation. Uh, this is nothing but we can consider it under analysis of literature. Uh, even we can say synthesis of literature. Certainly. And uh, similarly for the comparison of uh, return loss, uh, you see the performance, how it is varying for a different. So from this we can easily identify uh, which kind of PGS structure can give uh, better performance for any filter. For example, uh, if you consider this uh, return loss uh, performance, uh, this blue color, blue color says it is two circular slot. Yes, this two circular slot uh, return loss performance is uh, very good compared to all other uh, results. Uh, like that, we can do some uh, comparison uh, results analysis and all. Uh, so these 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 uh, these are these are will come under uh, literature only because all these works are already existing existing work just I have added uh, some technology into the already existing work uh, uh, just I have uh, I have analyzed the performance of the each and every filter topologist by adding some DGS technology uh, uh, in the you know, like. So then I compared all the uh, filter uh, parameters. Uh, what I have decided you know, already: pass band, pass band ripple, insertion loss, return loss, group delay, roll off, like that. So when I am comparing for all these four structures, I found for a two circular slot filter, the performances are good compared to uh, all other structures. So uh, from this I can uh, decide. Mm, I can use this two circular kind of PGA structure for any filter structure. Uh, it can uh, give better performance compared to other PGA structure. Like that, I can come to the conclusion. So this is one kind of case study. So finally, that uh, two circular slot uh, filter. So this is the front side of the filter, the band pass filter. This band pass filter consists of uh, two uh, vertical resonators. Similarly, to another two uh, short vertical resonator. And the back side of the filter they consist of uh, two circular slots. This is front side, this is back side. There's a band pass filter structure, this is a defective ground structure. So uh, the measurement of uh, insertion loss and return loss and the other parameters measured using this uh, vector network analyzer. Um, actually, we have done this measurement in uh, some center for electromagnetics. Um, and uh, for this work, uh, we got guidance. Uh, I um, mean, practice for measurement and all, we got guidance from uh, Dr. Rajesh uh, from Munshita Electronics. I'm going to thank. And then, uh, about uh, again, uh, the measurement, measured results. See, after doing measurement, the measured results are compared with the simulated results. Uh, and you see the deviation of uh, measured results. It is not same, exactly same, right? There are a lot of deviation is there. So uh, we analyzed from this. We uh, after getting this result, measured results. Um, as a researcher, we analyzed what are all the reasons for getting this much of deviation. Uh, it may due to uh, substrate material, or it may due to uh, selecting the tool, or it may due to uh, the design, or it may due to uh, connector pro proper uh, quality connector, or it may due to soldering. Or it may be because if you come to high frequency design, each and every uh, point is uh, as a we, we need to consider it uh, importantly carefully uh, because uh, no even in, in soldering if you add some extra lead it will create some noise and uh, it will give some uh, harmonics to the output. So this uh, this is. Uh, so these are the experiences we faced. When we are doing, uh, when we are analyzing, uh, when we are doing literature survey, when we are analyzing literature survey papers um, uh, by by doing some simulations and comparing some results. Uh, then 
uh, next i want to you know i want to add this topic there is why do people aspire for research what makes them undertake research so that also as a uh, as a student we have to think uh, aspire to get a research degree along with the career benefits aspire to take up the challenge in solving and unsolved problems desire to get the intellectual joy of doing a creative work aspire to do research to serve the society seek to get recognition and respect many other it may be a type of um and uh, the next topic is what is an approach see here uh, in research design and engineering approach so what is an approach approach general meaning is uh, coming close to see here uh, i have uh, mentioned this uh, topic uh, what is an approach because uh, this is the main student problem see even uh, when they are doing uh, their uh, ug project or uh, pg project or uh, it may be a research phd work so uh, approach is very very important coming close to so what is the meaning of coming close to as a student point of view uh, for example a military unit can approach an enemy position uh, we are saying right uh, if you take your annual trip over the river and through the wood uh, to grandmother's house as you approach the house comes into view at some point so there is another major sense that i am aware of the other meaning is i am aware of and that is the approach to the problem or challenge so let's say your uh, team hard work needs to figure out why your company's best selling cars brakes keep failing you and your teammates need to figure out an approach to solving this problem preferably quickly and effectively so approach is nothing but coming close to so the the the, the problem of uh, many students even they have uh, entered into their project even they entered into their um, uh, pg project ug project or uh, phd research uh, they are not uh, coming close to that uh, main uh, research that is the main problem so always uh, we should have uh, in our mind uh, see when you are doing your research uh, we should approach we should uh, uh, approach the research that is very important this is a, there is a first step of any a researcher are coming close to how can we come close how can we come close to such see uh, for this answer is uh, always uh, we have to think about it always we have to talk about it always we have to discuss about it always we have to search about it uh, so these are the uh, basic steps to coming close how it will happen automatically this it, it again it is based on your interest and mindset so a researcher a good researcher uh, automatically uh, they will have all this uh, it will happen uh, automatically all these things will happen automatically okay coming to plus so just uh, for student side i want to mention this then um, next uh, how does an engineer approach a problem how does an engineer approach a problem see generally uh, uh, generally uh, general uh, people approaching problem is different from engineers so that is why i have uh, uh, separately i have added this uh, uh, question how does an engineer approach a problem find the problem uh, according to the requirement and specification analyze it design it implement it test it repeat or stop so this is the basic steps uh, for uh, approaching a problem for an engineer or engineers will often use reverse engineering to solve problems for example by taking things apart to determine an issue finding a solution and then putting the object back together again so this is another way of uh, reverse engineering kind of uh, solving problem engineers know how things work and so they constantly analyze things and discover how they work and how to approach research see um, so this so generally we, we studied how uh, how does an engineer approach a problem and how to approach research uh, how to approach research by talking by discussing 
by searching how what method we can use for this uh, generally or uh, technically uh, we can give some uh, definitions two basic approaches to research one is quantitative another one is qualitative in quantitative approach generation of data in quantitative form which can be subjected to rigorous quantitative analysis in a formal and rigorous fashion the another one is qualitative approach uh, qualitative approach is concerned with the subjective assessment of attitudes opinions and behaviors so research in such a situation is a function of researchers insights and impressions generally the techniques of focus group interviews projective techniques and depth interviews these are all used engineering research may not have anything to do with this approach so last sentence is very important engineering research may not have anything to do with this research, with this approach it may be different so these are the general uh, quantitative approach uh, qualitative approach and uh, further if you talk about uh, components of research approach uh, generally uh, two components we can say one is data collection another one is data analysis so in data collection only uh, we have uh, two approaches or uh, the one is qualitative another one is quantitative in data analyzing uh, we can say inductive and deductive so qualitative and quantitative already we discussed when you talk about inductive and deductive uh, even it is uh, applicable for developing a scientific subject so inductive approach in which uh, some we can do some experiment using experiments we can get some results uh, using those results we can develop a subject or uh, we can further uh, the research can be progressed but in deductive approach there is no experiment we cannot do an experiment there is no experiment there is no results but still we need to progress the research still we need to develop a subject how it is possible it is also possible uh, by using a uh, deductive approach a uh, deductive in this deductive approach uh, we are uh, defining some variables we are applying some mathematics uh, we are de defining some postulates postulates are nothing but uh, concepts or axioms or definitions are accepted as true so or we can say it is a law of nature so using these we can easily develop the subject we can easily progress the research that kind of research is called that kind of data analyzing is called deductive approach for example i can say uh, the difference between circuit theory and electromagnetic theory uh, circuit theory uses inductive approach but in electromagnetic theory we use deductive approach uh, because uh, the basic fundamental law of electromagnetic is coulomb's law uh, Coulomb's law is uh, practically, we cannot prove Coulomb's law. It is accepted as true law of nature. So uh, in research also, uh, it is applicable. So data analyzing are two types, inductive and deductive. Then when we talk about components of research approach, we can say it is descriptive and